OK, welcome. What I want to do is show you how to solve this absolute value inequality. So it's important that when, when you're solving absolute value inequalities, we need to make sure that we understand, first of all, our two cases. But before that, we need to understand how are we going to get to two cases. So let's go back and talk about absolute value inequality. Remember, absolute value inequalities say the absolute distance from 0. So if I say the absolute distance, and that's talking about like on a number line. So if I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. All right? And when I'm looking at the distance from negative 4 to 0 and 0 to 4, I notice that both of those distances are what we call the absolute value. They, the distance you get from 0 to negative 4 and from 0 to 4 is both 4. So therefore, the absolute value of negative 4 is equal to 4. And the absolute value of 4 is also equal to 4. So the distance between both of these is what we call the absolute value 4. So to do that, what we need to look at here is I need to get an absolute value by itself. Notice my absolute value equals my number. So when I'm solving an absolute value, I need to first make sure I get my, I isolate my absolute value sign, meaning I get my absolute value sign all by itself. So I look at this, and I'm going to use my reverse order of operations to undo what's happening to my absolute value sign. And I look up here, and I can say, all right, my absolute value sign is being multiplied by negative 5. So I'm going to divide by negative 5. When doing that, I'm now left with absolute value of 6a plus 2 equals a positive 3. All right. So now we come into the lovely case. All right. So what this states, if I was going to say this out loud, the absolute value of 6 times a number plus 2 is equal to 3. Now remember, for it to equal 3, we could have inside of here could be positive 3 or inside of here could equal negative 3, right? Because if it equaled positive 3, if it equals positive 3, then the positive version of an absolute value equals the number. And this inside here could also equal negative 3, because if the negative value of an absolute value also equals 3. So what I'm going to do is what we call set up two cases. My first case is going to be 6a plus 2 equals 3, seeing meaning this inside of here can equal 3. And then also, 6a minus 2 could also equal negative 3. So inside of here could also equal negative 3, because it doesn't matter if this equals 3 or negative 3, my answer is always going to be 3 by the absolute value sign. So now, ladies and gentlemen, we have two-step equations, right? This ain't bad. We can solve this stuff. So to solve here, subtract the 2, add the 2. So I get 6a equals 1. Here I get 6a equals negative 1. Divide by 6. a equals 1 over 6. Um, here I divide. Why is it plus 2? Yeah, I was going to say that's minus plus 2. I was going to say that doesn't make sense. Minus 2, so I get negative 5. Then I divide by 6. So I get a equals negative 5 over 6. Now, the next thing that's important for us to understand about this is we need to make sure we check our solutions. So I'm going to write a nice check. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in each one of these values in for a. So I write absolute value of 6 times 1 6 plus 2 equals 3. 6 times 1 6 is 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. Absolute value is equal to absolute value of 3. Is that equal to 3? Yes, it is. Check. Next one. Absolute value of 6 times negative 5 over 6 uh, plus 2. 6 plus 2, 6 plus 2, minus 2, right there. Absolute value equals 3. There you go. 6 times negative 5 over 6. That's equal to negative 5. Negative 5, I'm sorry. Negative 5 plus 2 is equal to absolute value of negative 3, which is equal to 3. Is that true or false? That's true. So there you go. Both solutions work. So ladies and gentlemen, just to recap, whenever you're solving absolute value signs, make sure you first isolate the absolute value, then solve for two separate cases, then check your work. And there you go. That's it.